Because of the budget restriction, there is now a level playing field in terms of the financial resources available to Formula One teams for the purpose of further developing their cars. However, for some teams, it continues to be tough to compete with the more established teams. The Haas Formula One team is the only one that has not yet placed any modifications on its car. But why is that so? Is this due to a lack of funds, a lack of technical expertise, or just a strategic decision? And why is Schumacher in trouble for the Hungarian GP? Let's find out. Since the beginning of the season, the VF22 has been performing exceptionally well, as evidenced by the fact that the team has been able to compete well against their opponents and earn points in several of the 12 races. Mick Schumacher was not able to maintain his fantastic run of performances from France in Great Britain and Austria. The German driver for Haas, who had finished 8th and 6th in the previous two races, was unable to advance farther than 15th place in a race that must be completely forgotten by the American squad. As many people know, we waited a bit longer to bring our upgrade to track, because I think we still have good place," explained Steiner. Now what we want to do is put performance on. The race was also negatively impacted by Kevin Magnussen's retirement from the battle. Despite this, the group that Gunther Steiner was leading maintained their place as 8th in the builder's classification. An outstanding performance, taking into account the immense challenges that Haas has had over the last several years, and also taking into consideration the fact that the Kannapolis team is the only one on the grid that has not yet delivered significant improvements to their vehicles. The VF22 will finally receive significant modifications in time for the Hungarian Grand Prix, which is the last race before the Formula 1 season takes a break for the summer. Steiner, on the other hand, made it quite apparent that there will be no opportunity to test out all of the new features on both vehicles at the same time. Because there's a shortage of the upgraded parts, the team has decided to exclusively give them to Magnussen because he is now the highest position in the World Championship. This means that Mick Schumacher will continue to race the normal car. For its current new package, Williams followed a similar tactic. Alex Albon was the only driver to use it in the British and Austrian races. Despite running a vehicle that has been practically unchanged throughout the whole season, Haas has managed to maintain its strength in the midfield pack. There is only one car having the upgrade, said Steiner when asked by Motorsport.com about the hungry package. And then the spares will be very lean even for that car. You know, everything came late. We had a lot of accidents this year. So all the materials were used up a lot to do that one, and then we started late also. We postponed it from France to Hungary. The only development package of the season had been expected to feature at this weekend's Hungarian Grand Prix, but Steiner has now conceded that the team has been unable to produce enough parts for two cars in time. In the beginning, they said we cannot do it anymore until Spa, and everybody really pushed to have at least one set for Budapest, so we can get some data and can analyze it for when we get going again after the break. And then if it doesn't work, we can always go back to what we had before. We have a good plan in place, well organized. There is also a chance Schumacher may take an engine penalty in Hungary, given that he is on his third and final penalty-free Ferrari power unit, but Steiner is hoping to hold off on that. Steiner expects the package to show a clear benefit at the Hungara ring, where downforce is so important. Talking numbers, I don't want to get the number, because then you get disappointed, and what do you compare it with, he said, because you haven't got the same car doing a back-to-back. So we know how much more downforce it gives, there's a calculation how much it should do, and then we see how much it does do. But I'm not going out there saying now this is what it should be doing, we will find out and then we will see if it works. But we will not have a back-to-back -back from the same car. Although Schumacher will provide a baseline with a standard car, Steiner conceded that won't be as good as converting the same chassis between specs over the course of the weekend, something McLaren did with Lando Norris between FP1 and FP2 in France. It is difficult across two cars. I mean, across two cars you can see perfectly the downforce data, and that is good that you have two different specs running on the same racetrack. At least you can compare the downforce data and go from there, and then see if that downforce data, if there's a delta, gives you the time advantage you calculated or you're expecting from the simulator. Steiner also confirmed that after Magnussen took a fourth power unit in France and started from the back, Schumacher is now due to do the same. However, the team hopes not to have to make the change in Hungary, where passing is so difficult, assuming that the German has sufficient mileage left on his previous examples. He's due to an engine change as well, and I don't know exactly when we're going to do that, he said. We need to check a few things, but hopefully we can avoid to do it in Budapest. If we're not forced to do it, we're not going to do it in Budapest. That I cannot say 100%, because they need to look to this engine, how it looks. But once we know that one, but the plan in the moment is to do it in Spa. According to Steiner, one can be happy that an upgrade is coming at all. 
The parts arrived late. We had a lot of accidents this year, so we used up all our materials on spare parts. We then postponed it from France because the guys couldn't have done it anymore. Heavy accident in Saudi Arabia, car cut in half in Monaco. Mick Schumacher contributed with his crashes himself to the fact that he had to do without an upgrade in Hungary and was only allowed to do it after the summer break in Spa. Schumacher, although, reacted calmly. That's okay for me, he said after the race in France, and continued, I think it should still be good because our car is running. Budapest is a track where it should actually work for us. Even without a new package, it can be good. The new upgrade has to work anyway first. According to the manager who is based in Bolzano, the upgrades will focus on fixing both the side pods and the bottom. On the other hand, Schumacher is going to have to cope with yet another challenge in the near future. The manager of the Stars and Stripes wall has, in point of fact, declared a short one penalty on the grid for the next F2 champion. Schumacher's supply of three power units is, in reality, running low. However, the collective expectation of the squad is that, barring unforeseen circumstances, we will be able to sidestep the requirement that we serve the penalty in Hungary. In reality, overtaking is one of the most difficult tasks on the whole calendar at Budapest's notoriously difficult track. The 2022 British Grand Prix is upon us. Do you think what happened with Schumacher is fair? Tell us your thoughts in the comments section. Well, that's it from this video. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of our content, please subscribe to our channel. We are so glad to have you here with us today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye!